start it. How are you guys? We are about to do a flipped video lesson um, on the division algorithm. Today in class, you learned partial quotient division. We went through it pretty quickly. We're going to go over this tonight so that tomorrow you can practice both methods and I can help you and we can figure out which method works better for you. If you had me in class last year, this is a quick review. You're going to do great. If you didn't have me in class last year, I've got some great tricks to show you to make it easy. Excuse the appearance. I was at the ball field all day. Logan had a three and a half hour baseball game, which they won by two points, so it's all good. All right. You should have your notes that I gave you, green sheet, a pencil, or you can do this in flare markers if you want. You should be ready to go. Now, I didn't write the steps up here because I have my notes right here and I didn't want to take that time up since I only have 10 minutes. So I'm going to go through my steps and show you one by one what they look like. And you're going to do them with me in your notes. So first, the first thing you do is you write the problem in the house. And the problem I gave you is 2089 divided by 6. The way you write it in the house is you put the 2089, which is your dividend, you put the house over it, and you put divide, your divisor here. Your quotient's going to go up here. Now you don't need to make that funny line down here because we're not doing partial quotient, we're doing division the traditional way. Actually, your parents will love this. Now, when I start with division, I always usually start teaching my kids how to make a top-bottom chart. It just makes it easier to begin with. As you get more and more proficient with division, you're not going to need this, but for now you might. And a top-bottom chart is simply a chart of multiples. So if you, and they're the multiples of the divisor. So if you look, our divisor is 6. So I put the 6 up here, and then down here I'm simply going to write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's what always goes on the top side. On the bottom side, you put the multiples of your divisor. So in this case, the multiples of 6. So it would be 0, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, and 54. That's going to make this problem so much easier. All right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this top bottom chart and our knowledge of multiples to figure out what is to divide into the highest place value in the dividend by the divisor. We're on step three. So you're going to look at your divisor, just like you did in partial quotient, and you're going to think, huh, does 6 go into 2? No, it does not. So then you're going to look at 20. Does 6 go into 20? Yes, it does. Well, then you are ready for steps 4 and 5, which you can combine because of your top-bottom chart. You can think, hmm, the closest number to 20 without going over is 18. So I need to put 3 on the top and 18 on the bottom. Now we've jumped all the way to step 6, which is subtract. 20 minus 18 is 2. And then 7 is step out, or cross out, and bring down. Now whenever you bring down, every time you brought something down, you have to put something above it. You have to have a number lined up because of the place value. If you don't have a number that goes into it, you would put a 0. In this case, there is a number that goes into 28. And once again, we're going to look at our top bottom chart. Think, huh, the closest number to 28 without going over is 24 which means we put the 4 on the top and the 24 on the bottom. And then we subtract. 28 minus 24 is 4, and then I need to cross out and bring down my 9. Now notice I have something over the 0, something over the 8, so I have to have something over the 9. So I'm going to look at this 49. I'm going to think to myself, all right, my closest number to 49, or my closest multiple 49 from 6 is 48. And that's the 8th multiple, or 6 times 8 is 48, so the 8 goes on top, and it's on the top side of my chart, and the 48 goes on the bottom. 49 minus 48 is 1. I have nothing else to bring down. I haven't taught you decimals yet, so you don't have to work it out to the hundredths place. So with this 1, as long as it's less than your divisor, you can put it as the remainder. Now. That's up through step 8, or step 9, so I carried my remainder up. But step 10 is extremely important. Step 10, you need to check your answer. And you do that by multiplying. So I'm going to take my quotient, which is 348, and I'm going to multiply that by 6. 348 times 6. 6 times 8 is 48. Carry my 4. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 4 is 28, and 6 times 3 is 18, 
plus 2 is 20. Hmm. It's not the right, it's not my dividend. Until I remember, oh, that's right, I had the remainder of 1. So then I'm going to take the 1 and add that to it. So I'm adding my remainder. And when I add it, I get 2,089. Perfect check. I'm good to go. Pretty easy. All right, especially with this. This is a great tool to use. What I want you to do now is I want you to take your notes and I want you to flip them over. Or you can do this on a separate sheet of paper if you want your notes out in front of you. I want you to divide your paper into four, and I want you to do these four division problems. I would like you to try to use the standard algorithm. I strongly suggest you make a top-bottom chart for each one if you're not used to the division algorithm. First, I want you to do 4,789 divided by six. You can use the top-bottom chart that we did on your notes for that. I want you to do 5,983 divided by eight. I want you to do 782 divided by three. And then I want you to do 8,204 divided by 9. I want you to end each problem with the check so that you know if you got it right. Now, if you do your check and you don't have it right, you need to rework the problem. So just work on these for about 20 minutes and see how you do. And we'll go over them in class tomorrow. All right? Those were quick notes. So I hope you guys spend about 20 minutes working on your division problems. Have a great night.